Hello everybody, I'm Larry Ridley and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Here's the man who was a scoring machine last week, finishing with three rushing touchdowns in their win. Hard to imagine he'll be able to duplicate that performance in this one, but he'll give it a shot. It's the Jets going up against the Steelers. With that, we'll send it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. They've got the call in this Week 5 matchup. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we've got a good Week 5 matchup in store here between the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play. It's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And it's got folks believing that this is a team that's built to go all the way. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. And on the ground they go with a running back. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. And they'll run it here. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. It's almost a tendency breaker. Now they try the right side here. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. 
partner, when it's a goal-to-go situation, if you're on the field on defense, you have to know that you may be called on to make a tackle at any time. Here, the cornerback does exactly... And he's in! Touchdown, Steelers! A great play there with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Steelers have taken a first-quarter lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with... Now the 12th year man from Western Washington, Michael Kanan on to punt. This is taken around the 12. Great blocking, nearly sprung in there. 28-yard return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. times in this game I just don't know that he envisioned doing it in the first quarter he probably did I'm not sure we, <laughs> we did, did yeah. right because all the great ones that's what they do they dream about it right they think about it they envision it they think it's going to happen second down a, a well executed blitz no doubt great job by the linebacker maybe the quarterback if he could have seen that could have audible there yeah he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense all the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle and he made a great tackle and he is going to lose yardage here he lost four there and it's third down and the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense. They were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? On oh, a delay of game there, they could not get the playoff in time. Frustrating for the head coach. Frustrating for the offense. Sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker. Still third down. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Now Ben on third and long. Sammy Coates has it complete. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. So much about this game. Here's Michael Kanan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you gotta figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we gonna do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now.
And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set. Now with a play clock at four, we're going to get a timeout call. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. time to the tailback and he's going to get this one down to the 30 three yards is half of what they needed now can they get the other three here on third down we always like to talk about defense in terms of levels first level defensive line second level linebackers third level defensive backs on that run that was what we call a first and oh it caught it up and unfortunately he's able to get this one back so it is a first down can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen. Because now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And they'll go on the ground. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. His pass caught at the four. And eventually stopped just shy of the goal line right around the two. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. So we have come to halftime. And what and Larry apparently very brief in his report. Thanks anyway, my man, as we're already set for action. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. So nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And the confidence from last week carrying over to this week. Two weeks in a row, and I have to admit, last week, I thought they were going to really struggle running the football. I thought that they had a real challenge on their hands, and they more than met it and created big-time openings that he just absolutely hurdled through. And they figured, why not? Let's carry forward this way. Again, the same thing. All the blocking schemes are there. 
I think they've really done a great job. That B gap between the guard and the tackle has been their all game for them, and they continue to exploit it. And he's just going downhill. Not only downhill, but with incredible, incredible force. And down to the 36-yard line here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. And the tap is made there by one of the secondary members. And I can guarantee you, having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field, they're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front. I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized he was 10 yards downfield. That's not good. That's being driven off the line of scrimmage. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. A great effort there with his third touchdown of the game, number 15 on the year. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. And he keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question it. Here's Michael Kanan now, as he's on to punt for New York. He gets it away. It's a high hanger. Now this is fielded in the end zone. And a nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, Three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> now a handoff here to his running back. And he cuts it back left. It's a foot race. And he cuts it back right, and he's got a crease. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A great play there with a career-high four-touchdown game. And that rushing touchdown is four. Puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had. Folk now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. This will be taken about the 12. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got to a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure. He's got the lane, and there he goes. It's a big play there for the Steelers. And with that carry, he has done it. He breaks the single-game rushing record. How about doing it in the spotlight of our game? How wonderful is that to see all those yards accumulated culminating in a brand-new NFL record?
So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A great effort there with an unbelievable fifth touchdown of the game. And he just tied the NFL record on that fifth rushing touchdown. He's the sixth man ever to do that in a single game. But, partner, did you just say that he tied an NFL record there? Yes, sir. I mean, what's up? Five touchdowns on the ground. doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. You'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. And to give this time to the tailback, and he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm rubbing my eyes after that play. Did we just see that runner not get yardage? A big-time play by the defense. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on four. Now they'll run it on the toss. And Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get <laughs> home after a win like that. So for the Steelers, they improve to 5-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Miami Dolphins. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they'll fall to 1-4 and four with a loss. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Glendale to take on the Cardinals.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz.